So I'm just <laughs> sort of adding everyone to our stream tonight. Just going to give everyone a minute to get on, to get connected, pull up the uh, YouTube and pop in on us tonight. I, I know I always say this and then I never do, but I've got to make tonight's stream short because we are in the middle of what I want to call the heat wave. It has to be because just yesterday I was walking around in my hoodie and my like fuzzy pajamas <laughs> because I was, it was like 60 degrees and today it's like, I think that was yesterday as a matter of fact. Saturday and Sunday I was cold, not cold, but like cool, um, cool enough for like long pants and fuzzy pajamas. And all of a sudden today it's like 90 degrees and all of these lights are just too much for my space, which I haven't like cleaned out the windows and I'm sort of a stickler about that. I don't want to open the windows until I clean them because <laughs> I'm like, I don't want all that stuff blowing in that's been accumulating throughout the winter. Um, I don't have my AC up yet. So I'm baking and you guys know I'm an oil slick. So all of this is about to start shining through. I didn't use my magic space perfecter today. Um, the tube that I had finished and I got another tube. I just don't know where I put it. So I, I know myself I'm gonna end up like waiting a week to see if I can find the tube that I bought. Going and ordering another tube on Avon.com again and then like the day before that tube arrives in the mail, finding the tube that I just like that I first bought that I couldn't find. That's just me. But um I do have a lot of stuff. I'm behind on all my videos. I haven't really had a chance to work on editing and uploading videos and I have so much great stuff to share with you guys and I just haven't had a chance to do it. Watch me like next month upload videos and things that I made in April and yeah definitely April because our cruise was April and I have some videos from them and I keep telling you guys I have stuff to upload I just can't get to upload it but um things have been a little crazy in not in a bad way just in a busy way it is what it is part of life I just need to suck it up and move on but <laughs> I am definitely learning life lessons from this experience. So, you know, you, you draw what wins you can from every situation. But um, it's actually interesting because today I'm actually going to be talking to you about something that sort of came into my radar this past week. Oh, by the way, I hope you guys had an awesome Memorial Day weekend. Um, I did have a three-day weekend it felt like a day and a half because I was just like, I couldn't wait for the weekend and I just kind of crumpled into a big ball of bleh, uh, <laughs> and then got back into work and, you know, not day job work, not evening work, but other stuff that I needed that I need to get done so that I can have a life and be a normal human being for a change, um, you know, with a, a social life. But <laughs> the, this um, experience kind of brought some things to my radar. So tonight I'm actually going to be talking to you guys about, um, you know, forgiving yourself and um, letting, giving yourself some leeway when it comes to um, your failures, your um, wrong turns. Um, I, I know we're always a little bit leery of using the word failure because, um, you know, it just has that, you know, negative feeling, but it's, if you learn from it, then it's not that horrible. What's important about failure is not that you, um, it's not the failure in and of itself, it's what you learn from it. So we're going to be talking about that tonight and some of the things that can hinder you from moving forward. And I'm actually going to share a little bit of what's been happening with me. But um, let me give you all a chance to get connected. I have to share in all of our Facebook groups. So if you're joining me through one of those links, um, hi! <laughs> Um, so as you guys also know, we always share in our chat box, our wins for the week. So share what you're celebrating, what you've accomplished, um, what's happening with you and, um, you know, what's new. I'm like, wait, what are all the groups? <laughs> That's one. Uh, and one more and get all of these shares down pat um, yes <laughs> Facebook is like are you sure oh my gosh Facebook 
Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Facebook has gotten so finicky uh, of late. So if you're a part of any groups, if you've tried to um, post to any groups, you're probably realizing. And if you're a member of any other social media channel, you're probably seeing a million um, changes in clauses that have been happening <laughs> over the last few months. Um, this is what happens when you learn from your mistakes and when you learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> so again, a good thing. So um, yeah, so for me, like I said this weekend, it was kind of just a chance to catch up on work that I was behind on, things that I need to do, need to get out of the way um, to just move on with my life. But <laughs> um, I, it's something that I struggle with. I don't even want to talk about it because it's just like, whatever. Um, but nothing serious, nothing like a health issue or anything, just something that I, I need to do. It's a part of adulting. But um, I need to get it out of the way. I need to get done so I can continue. And it's just something that I don't enjoy doing. I, I just, it, it's boring and asinine and, <laughs> and a little... A little bit of a pain in the butt for me so it's something that I struggle with and because of that I put it off um, and now it's like deadline you've got a couple of months to go do it now or start over from scratch and I just don't you know you know when you put in the time and effort into something you don't want to have to start off from scratch and you guys know me I have a thing about failing I don't like to and um, I, I found that I've been failing in this thing and <laughs> not doing a good job at it. And because of that, I I went from just not really wanting to do it to just having this huge dislike for it and disconnect. And anytime I need to do it, I, I start binge eating junk food. You guys see my skin was like doing so good after I started, after I, a matter of fact, after I did my spirit cleanse. I've seen such a huge change. I'm going to chalk that up for a win for two week, this week. But um, I've seen a huge change in my diet, in um, my skin as a response to the change in my diet. I've been eating healthier. I've been, um, you know, exercising more, taking better care of my body. And I've been seeing the results. Um, there's been a little bit of weight loss and then a huge weight gain on the cruise. <laughs> a little bit of weight loss. Um, but my skin was looking better. And then time came around for for me to get stuff done again and all of a sudden I was living in the box of chocolate um do you guys remember hot popcorn side note when we were little there was this like hot popcorn craze I don't know if it had just come out or if we had just discovered it as children but I got into hot popcorn and it was like the best thing and I recently rediscovered it and this past week I've eaten one whole bag of chips of it's not even popcorn anymore it's like a uh, hot and sweet cheese curl sort of thing and I've eaten one bag every single day this week it's been that bad like I sit down to start getting work done and all of a sudden I'm like I'm depressed I need an ice cream sandwich a pack of cookies and a giant bag of hot cheese popcorn or hot cheese cheese curls and <laughs> starting to see the results but that's how bad it is um so it's not just a matter of me, you know, not wanting to just do what I need to do anymore. It's a matter of me feeling really like emotionally, physically, mentally, just like this huge aversion to this process. And it's starting to manifest itself, like I said, in, you know, physically because I'm eating a ton of crap. Um, I, I wake up and I find myself not even wanting to get out of bed because I'm like, I know I need to that this thing is on my agenda and I don't even want to start my day because I know that it, it, it's there waiting for me to get it done. And I know I'm being melodramatic, but um, <laughs> sometimes I, I think it's so huge to me because I, you know, there is a deadline. My family's all like, you need to get this done. Um, there's kind of a lot riding on it for me, but if you guys remember with like when you were in college or at high school and you were applying for college, um, you know, college applications, I remember, was one of those things where you know you needed to get it done, you knew it was important to your future, but you just kind of dreaded doing it. So we all, well, not all of us, 
in my school, there are a lot of kids. My, I mean, my entire school got it done like months ahead of time. But even then, <laughs> within us, we, we were waiting until like the last day for the school deadline. And I remember a lot of my friends were just, you know, doing the applications. I was one of them who was doing the applications the day before, the, the night before they were due. So procrastination isn't new to me, but... I'm starting to really look at and analyze why I procrastinate and what some of the, the things that keep me from moving forward because I have also been feeling for the last maybe year or two or five <laughs> that in certain areas of my life, I've just been in a desert. And I've talked about this with my friends and, you know, we've had this discussion of not moving forward and, you know, feeling like you're, you're stuck in the same spot for a long time. Does anybody else feel that way? Do you ever feel that you're you're just not moving, that everything is stagnant, that one thing after another just isn't progressing the way that you want it to? Well, this is one of those things that is also in my stagnation period, but because I've been in a holding pattern with it, other things in my life have also sort of been being put on hold because I just can't move forward with this one thing. It's like you've got a flat tire, the car still moves, but slowly the pressure on all the other tires is getting to be too much, so your car is just moving slower and slower and slower. Thank you, Shoshana. Shout out to Shoshana um, from my team, who's also knocking it out. Shoshana, wins for the week. I know you got stuff to celebrate. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is this is one of those things. It's like that nail in your tire. It's just draining the air out, putting the stress on the rest of your tires, which is putting stress on your engine, which is causing you to burn more gas and you know move forward more slowly. And this week, and I sort of um, had this moment where I, I wanted to pick up something else. And <laughs> I don't know if this is a form of procrastination that I do this, but when I'm, um, sometimes when I'm working on one thing, um, maybe it's a, a really technical hands-on thing. I try, I, I find myself learning something that is um, very heady, very mental, very, you know, uh, like learning, a new, trying to learn a new language or something like that. And vice versa. I find myself when I'm trying to um to study or um do schoolwork or um you know learn something new mentally i find myself picking up a hobby that's very physical so um <laughs> like the other day i was working on learning to sew i took a sewing class and I, it, it goes to both ways it's a part of me procrastinating but it's also a way to relieve my brain you know if i'm very um in a, in a, if I'm heavily in a mental place, I need something physical to just kind of take my mind off of it. Anyone out there knit or crochet or, or do anything with your hands? I know a couple of my friends cook to de-stress. It's work, but because it's like the opposite of what you need to do, <laughs> it kind of helps to relieve you. So I found myself in a new process and I, um, I, I, I just decided, you know, I'm just going to learn something new. I'm going to work on this thing here. And all of a sudden in my head, no sooner than I can get the words out of my mouth to say, yeah, I'm going to learn something new. This is something that I might be good at. There was this tiny little voice in my head that was like, my voices have faces. My voice, had, the voice in my head had a face like this. And I, I just thought to myself, you're going to do something new when you can't even complete the things that you need to do. What makes you think that you couldn't be good at something else. You're not good at this thing, you know? And I, I kind of stopped because I think because we're doing these trainings and um, our, our talks here, I'm a little more um, conscious of the conversations that happen in my head. <laughs> they always say that you're crazy if you talk to yourself, but I always say you're not crazy if you talk to yourself. You're crazy if there are voices going on that are not your voice. Uh, <laughs> So as long as it's only my voice in my head, I'm okay. But um, hey, Misty. Hey, Clarita. Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, yes, Clarita. Definitely enjoy your sales development program. Those are super important. I'm so glad to hear that you are partaking in those. So yes, girl, I'll catch you on the replay. <laughs> so I, I was conscious of this voice and I kind of took a moment and took a step back and said, okay, what is happening here? What am I telling myself? What kind of negativity am I feeding myself with? Where is this coming from? What is the reason for this? What is the root of this? How can I deal with this instead of just making it affect my behavior? Because I find that a lot of times we react, but we don't know what we're reacting to or why we're reacting the way that we are. 
you know, the reasons behind. And a lot of times it goes back to being something that is, you know, that tiny little small voice in the back of our head that we acknowledge that, you know, changes our actions, but that we don't acknowledge in a way that we sit, stop and say, wait, where did that voice come from? What was the reason for that? Um, so I, I found that I was looking at my past mistakes because I've kind of been um, messing up this process, which is why I'm still stuck in it um, for a variety of reasons. Again, we're not going to get into those today, but I was finding that the more I mess up, and the more I underperform according to my own um, ideals and belief system, and sometimes even the belief system of friends and family who are not really helping, but trying to encourage me by saying things like, oh, but you can, you should be able to do better at that. You're not dumb. I'm not doing better at that. So what does that mean? You know, <laughs> so, you know, you get this input from different people. And I realized that it was starting to not just affect how I was feeling, but how I was reacting. And my reaction was, I don't want to do this. I can't deal with this. Like mentally and emotionally, as I said, it's become a, a, a bit of a system where I start binge eating and, um, you know, eating unhealthy food and undermining all of the good work that I've been doing this year to get myself back in a healthy stage of living. And it's all kind of resulting from having to do this thing. And as I was evaluating and thinking about what, what was happening with me, I, I realized that it's so super important to let go of your past failures and give yourself that opportunity for forgiveness. Um, once Jessica Zumbush said something to me, um, you have to give yourself grace. Um, just, I don't know if she's on here now, but shout out to Jessica for giving me encouraging words. And I think I shared that with you guys once before, but, um, I, and I said, you know what, you have to learn how to forgive yourself and move forward and not let those things that you've done or not been able to do affect your processes, affect your, your future activities. I wish you guys could see my screen sometimes with this like ghost Thicker, but um, you have to be able to let go of your past failures, your wrong turns, and allow yourself to move forward. Because I found myself stuck in this cycle because, and you know, and getting, it's sort of like quicksand. The more you move, the more you struggle against it, the further behind you get, uh, or the, the, the lower you sink. And that's sort of what I was doing. So um, some of the things that I wanted to share to kind of encourage you guys today were to try and find a balance between learning from past events and letting the the fear of failure or the um, the negative emotions from those past events keep you from moving forward. Because so many of our actions are determined by lessons learned, whether it's a lesson learned from us in our past or a lesson taught to us from our friends and family members or that we've seen other people go through. And just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, think for, or imagine if you've ever seen um, like babies or pets, when they're walking along, if something pops out and frightens them in a specific place or, or at a specific moment, every single time that they go back to that place, they approach it, you know, with um, trepidation. They, they, take their time, they look, you know, like if you jump out at a baby from behind, a, you know, a flower pot, anytime that baby walks around that flower pot, they're like, is someone going to pop out and, and scare me? Because it happened once before and I don't want that to happen again. Or, um, you know, with pets, if something happens, um, my neighborhood has a lot of cats, but sometimes they'll be behind the garbage can and <laughs> I am that person. I drive up and I'm like, I see you in my yard and I'll lean on the horn and it's gotten to a point now the cats will see me come in and I'll see them kind of looking at me out of the corner of their eyes and doing, you know, this weird glaring thing. And then sure enough, I honk at them and it frightens them every time. But when they see me coming, whether I'm ready to honk or not, they're just like, oh, it's that car. <laughs> She's going to honk at me. Let me get out of her yard. They they just respond um, in a way that they're, they're as a as a result of what they've been through. And as human beings, we're sort of trained that way. You know, when you um, when you get burnt for the first time. 
all of a sudden now you make sure that you don't get burned again because it wasn't a good feeling. And sometimes uh, parents or adults will say, you know, you have to learn through um, experience because when you do get burned, you'll make sure you never do that again and experience that feeling of being burned. Um, yeah, Shoshana, exactly. You you get that hesitation in your approach. Um, some of you, if you've ever, even for us as adults, um, to say that it's not just children and pets, like as adults, I have this coffee mug, great mug, really good insulator, and I have another coffee mug, <laughs> terrible, no insulation whatsoever. When I carry the bad mug to work, by the time I get to work, my coffee is basically like room temperature. I put it to my head, I go sit down, I'm good. But sometimes I forget and I'll bring the really great coffee mug, get to work, all the coffee is still hot inside. And sure enough, I put it to my head and I burn my tongue. But what I found was now I open it up. I kind of see where the coffee is, the smoke coming out of it. And even, I know it's summertime now, but even by habit now, when I get to work, I'll just open my coffee mug and put it down. Just kind of give it a moment. Why? Because I've been burnt before. I don't want to experience that again. So I make sure that I take the necessary precautions to avoid that system. So there are opportunities in life where it's a good thing. So Shana says, oh, her dog is like that with basketballs, where the dog was hit accidentally with the basketball. Now that dog does not like basketballs. Exactly. Perfect example, Shoshana. Thank you for sharing. So you guys, you guys get that. So sometimes it is a good thing to be um, timid or leery that the response that we get is ingrained in us to protect us, um, to keep us from, you know, burning ourselves every single time we're constantly getting hit with basketballs or being frightened out of our sleep by the crazy lady who doesn't want us sleeping in the flower pots in her yard when she's driving in at night who honks the horn at us. On the other end, um, it can be a, a bad thing where, like I said, with our situation or my situation, where you're letting the fear or the um, past experience create a new fear that doesn't necessarily that won't necessarily be the result of the new action. And that keeps you in that holding pattern. So for example, let's say you go out and you have your first conversation with someone that you would love to um, either become a, a contact in your network to become a customer or to become a lead or to become a friend, whatever. You go out, you have this first conversation and maybe it doesn't work out the way that you want it to. Maybe the person, for some reason, is in a bad mood that day and they let you have it for no reason of your, you know, no fault of your own, just comes off really badly. And you're like, wow, that was rough. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> and then you, you know, you don't ever take the other opportunity to talk to another person to to share ever again and you just stay closed up and in your bubble and you never give yourself that opportunity to come out and see either speak to that person again to see what was wrong why they had such a bad reaction or you know you just are so afraid of having someone else react to you badly that you just can't bring yourself to have that conversation again um one of my friends shared like when you're dating or like in the dating pool, that first moment that you go and you, well, he's a guy, but <laughs> the first person you go to ask a girl out and, you know, she might say something like, eh, you? All of a sudden you feel two inches tall. You never ever want to talk to another human being again, but you can't live your life like that because, you know, one of these days your, I don't know, future wife or future husband is going to be out there and you're going to have to talk to them. But if you let that one moment of insecurity and fear hinder you, you'll never find that that future possibility. And it also works in a third way. So um, I went to school in the city and Manhattan is super windy. It is now because the weather is crazy. But um, there are certain pockets of the city where um, you get these wind tunnels because we have such tall buildings. For the most part, the wind isn't too crazy because the buildings will block most of the wind. But there are areas where you might have an opening between the buildings, maybe a wide boulevard or um, a park or, you know, some type of opening where you have low ground or you have a, a wide open space that the wind can come into. So I remember when I was at school, there was, we had one of these wind tunnel situations. And I remember my first time, it was a really rainy day and I'm with my umbrella. It wasn't, unfortunately, it wasn't at that time an Avon umbrella. So it didn't last too long. It snapped into pieces. I came into this area with the wind tunnel 
um, I crossed the street, stepped into that opening, was hit by the wind, and my umbrella just broke into like a million pieces. It couldn't handle it <laughs> at all. It just just wasn't built for for that, and I wasn't using it properly. I wasn't. I didn't put myself in the right stance, the right protective stance, because I wasn't expecting. I was just walking along. There wasn't really any wind other than that, because the buildings were protecting me. And then all of a sudden, I found myself in this place with this crazy wind. Lost my umbrella. Had to go through the rest of the day in the rain. Was completely soaked by the time I got home. It was one of those torrential downpour days. But I learned my lesson. And I said, you know what? Either I'm switching the ponchos, which I don't like. Uh, I mean, like those raincoat, like plasticky ponchos. Not just, you know, like a beautiful poncho. I mean, I'm not doing those sticky plasticky ponchos. Or I'm just never going to cross that street anymore. I'm going to just avoid it completely. Which means... Wh- which either meant for me going the long way around, which would make me take twice as long to get to my destination, or I could avoid it completely, which meant not going to my destination, which meant losing out on all all the, the benefits of being at that spot. Do you guys see where I'm going here with this? Um, or I could learn to deal with the situation so that I can get to my destination faster and actually benefit from being there on time when I wanted to be. Of course, I chose the latter because you can't just run away from wind, right? We all are out in the wind all the time. It's one of those things that you don't really think about as being scary, but it's a situation that we could um, draw parallels from for our discussion tonight. So the next time I was out with my umbrella on a really windy day, I made sure that when I got to that intersection, I braced myself, I turned that umbrella with the curvy part against the wind so that it didn't break my umbrella. And while everyone around me, they had their umbrellas being broken and ripped out of their hands, I was okay because I was prepared for the situation. I kind of knew what was coming and I was able to turn my umbrella in a way to brace myself and I was able to make it through that situation without having a problem. But it goes a little bit further than that. So Another time I was out with my friends, we were both walking along with our umbrellas and she came to visit. She wasn't used to this intersection. She didn't know what to expect, but I was able to say to her, hey, wait, you know, the wind is crazy here. Brace yourself. So we both got to that intersection, turned our umbrellas and again, walked through without a problem. But she said to me, she was like, oh my gosh, that was really crazy. (laughs) She was like, you know, you told me it was going to be a really strong wind, but I wasn't really expecting it. When the wind first took me, I thought it was still going to rip the umbrella out of my hands. But because you warned me, I I was a little bit prepared for it. So even though I didn't really know what was coming, I was braced enough to, to, to get through that situation. So the both of us were able to go through that situation unscathed with both of our umbrellas intact. So you guys are like, okay, where's Georgiana going with this? How do we go from learning from mistakes to umbrellas? Well, the parallels I drew from that was... You've you've got these three ways of dealing with these life situations. When you go through an obstacle in life or when you encounter a fear in life, you can just completely avoid the situation. But what does that mean? You're going to end up taking the long way around. You're going to have to go, you know, out of your way, maybe twice as much. It's going to take you longer, twice, two, three, four times as long, which is exactly what's happening to me in the situation that I said I really don't want to talk about that I'm ending up talking about anyway because it is a topic of tonight's discussion. But... (laughs) you're you're gonna expend so much more effort and energy to get to the same destination because you're avoiding this this one obstacle that's in your way same way in life we get these fears we get these objections we get our obstacles and you know we can look at it and say all right i don't want to do this i'm gonna go the long way around i'm going to work harder not smarter but in business we want to work smarter not harder we want to cut through and get to our destinations. We don't want to expend more energy or more money. Yeah, I could have taken a cab right across that intersection. Manhattan probably would have cost me 30 or 40 bucks <laughs> to get from point A to point B, but I had to weigh my options. I was I so um, leery of this intersection that I was willing to do that? I, I wasn't, so I found a workaround. The other thing that I wanted to share with you guys was, or you know, to elaborate on that, was, you know how I said I was, the next time I said, you know what, I'm going to go through this intersection, I'm just going to brace myself. It's the same thing that we could do. You've 
can draw from your experiences the negative things, the um, the wrong turns, the U turns, the the falling down, the scraping your knee, falling off the bicycle. Call it whatever you want, whatever makes you feel better. If failure is not the the word or the the phrase that fits your um, fits your lifestyle, but the important thing is that you learn from it and move forward to cut through it to get to the other side. You'll get there faster. You'll get there um, having expended less energy. And, you, you know, that way is the work smarter, not harder way. You know, you, you know you need to get from point A to point B. So instead of kind of flexing around and, you know, making excuses, gosh, I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> you know, you, you just do what needs to be done to move forward. And I find that a lot of times because we're so afraid whether it's we're conscious of it or it's something that's subconscious, we let the fear of failure hinder us from doing what we need to do. And it takes us so much longer to just get from point A to point B. And we have such a rough time because we don't want to take the straight, straight path because it is so windy. We'd rather go over the mountains and through the forest and get beat up and scratched up and dirty just trying to avoid this, this one situation. And I find talking to teammates and friends um, you know, people who are within our business or, or even people who are outside, it's so easy to, to find these areas and just subconsciously make that decision to, to back away and avoid it. But I, when I watch people and I watch the people who are the type of person that I want to be, I find that they had the same obstacles that we did. They had the same difficulties. They went through the same crap. But the key thing is that they went through it. And came out on the other side. And, you know, they they live to tell their story another day. And we so admire these people. And we think they're, you know, so amazing. And we draw so much inspiration from them. But when it comes time for us to just hold the umbrella ourselves, we're like, oh, no, I don't know if I want to do that. This is a little bit scary. I know they did it. But can I? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm just going to let go and back away slowly. And, you know, we don't get the, the benefit of just couldn't do and plowing forward. So we want to be the people who, like my friend, take the word and say, okay, you've done this. I can do this too. It might be a little scary. I may not be fully prepared or braced up for this, but I'm going to make it. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to try this out myself. And that's a third key takeaway I found. When we go through those moments in our life, we all have friends who have a story um, that inspires us. And usually that inspiration comes from their having to go through a difficulty. Now, you never want to wish difficulty on anyone, especially your friends. But you can say, you know what, I know that was a rough time for you, but it really encouraged me. And I would never wish for you to go through that again. But I've drawn so much inspiration from that. And I'm so blessed and thankful for all the men and women in my life. You guys know who you are, because I will tell you at that moment, like, wow, you know, that, that story, that story I need to take and do something with in my life because I feel so inspired and motivated. But when you go through these struggles and when you go through these moments, go through them, not turn around and run away, your experience becomes an inspiration for someone else. If I had decided that I was not going to walk through that intersection, that I was going to be like the dog or the baby that's like, oh, nope, I'm not going to do this. Got to go. As a matter of fact, there's a meme where the, this baby walks into this room and he's like, oh, nope, wrong place. And he just walks out. We don't want to be like that baby, you know? So if I was one of the, someone who was like that baby who walked in was like, oh, nope, I'm not going to do this. Backing out, my friend wouldn't have had the opportunity to save her umbrella. She would have walked right into that intersection and she also would have lost her umbrella. So now two of us would have been out of umbrellas. But when you go through it, what I'm trying to say is you're going through it and coming out stronger on the other end is not only strength for you, it's strength for someone coming up behind you or next to you, or, you know, someone who is watching you to learn from what you do. And even if you don't see yourself as, um, you know, like a big icon role model, there are people who are watching you. There are people who can still learn from your experience. I was reading an article the other day and I shared it on my um, my Facebook page, Ava by Georgiana. Um, and there's a story about a woman who's an entrepreneur. And I, when she started, she wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because I want my little girl to 
grow up be feeling entrepreneurial too. She was an entrepreneur because she had bills to pay. And <laughs> this is the, the path that she decided to take in her life. But she was beginning to see the entrepreneurial spirit rise up in her daughter. You know, her daughter was starting to look at careers and job opportunities in a different light than, you know, she was able to look at it when she was a, a girl of that age. And I even find for myself, um, even within my own life and in my own career, people will tell me things that are just so old school and old fashioned and backwards, like you have to have a nine to five. And if you don't, then that this, that, and the other, your life will never be a success. And you have to, I don't know, quit your nine to five at a certain point to stay at home and raise a family, or you've got to be married at a, a certain time in your life. You know, all kinds of things that are just, you know, the way things have traditionally been done. But I'm in a position now where I can say, you know what, that's just not the road for me right now. This is not where I want to be right now. I want to kind of diverge and veer off to the side and, you know, try this lifestyle out or, you know, do X, Y, and Z first. And I'm okay doing that because I have women in my life and other female role models that I could look towards to say, you know what? She's not doing that. She's she's okay. <laughs> you know, my other friend over here, she's good. Or I've got this friend who is taking that route, did quit her job to stay home with her family, um, did get married at the specific age, and she's loving it. But she did it at a moment in her life where she was comfortable doing it. And I want to do it in a moment in my life where I'm comfortable doing it too, you know? So when you go ahead and, hey, Anitra, I didn't see you there. <laughs> and Miss Janet, hey, how are you? Sorry, Janet, I have to be better with posting our, our links, but you know, you can always find it on the Facebook page. Um, so when you go through these things, I know it sucks when you're going through it, but you still have to, I, I want to encourage you. I'm not saying you have to, you're an adult. And if I tell you, you have to do this and you have to do that, I'll be just as bad as the people I'm complaining about. But I want to encourage you to look at the obstacles in your life. Look at the moments where you find yourself Again, whether consciously or subconsciously, kind of backing away out of a situation and saying, oh, nope, you turn this in for me and see why you're doing it. Is there a little voice in your head saying, no, don't do that because it's going to hurt or don't do that because it's scary or go, don't go to that place because it's a scary place. Or remember last time you did that and it didn't work out too well. I know it's on the road that you want to go through. I know your goal is on the other side of that thing. I know the pot of gold is just on the opposite side of that street, but take the long way around because it's safer. It's, it's less scary. Ask yourself why. What's causing you to do that? What is really the, the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen if you go through that? But also take some time to think, okay, who are the people in my life? Or, you know, who could possibly, whether I know them now or not, whether I know whether or not my story will affect them or not, what what is the kind of person or who is the kind of person that could benefit from my going through this and coming out on the other side? Who or what is the kind of person who will benefit from me taking the long, slow way and, you know, taking 50 years to come out on the other side? Make your choice. You might decide, okay, yeah, I'm going to just take the slow way because this way is just a little too brutal for me. But you might say, you know what? It's not that scary after all. Or I've got some people or I've got a little person that is just like me. Or I can picture someone out there being in a similar situation and being afraid to do this. I'm going to do this just to show that it can be done. And maybe nobody is really watching you at that moment. But think about it. Think about the, the stars and the, the success stories that we hear. A lot of times when they're going through the muck and the crap, we are not there with them. We don't see them. That's why it's mucky and crappy because, you know, you're, you're not a celebrity superstar or whatever. We see them on the other side when they're getting articles written about them in the most popular and, you know, latest and greatest magazines. But when they're going through the stuff, we're not there with them. We are not, you know, experiencing them, the situation with them. We're not like, yeah, yeah, go, go through the hard part because in six months, we're going to be reading your article in the magazine. They don't know. They're just going through it and just trying to get to from point A to point B and trying to work smarter, not harder. So while they're in it, they don't even see or conceive of us being there, but we kind of have the benefit now where we could say, you know what? Yeah, 
maybe in 10 or 20 years, uh, a little mini me or a little someone who's just like me, whether in my country or a different country, might be encouraged by this. Maybe no one ever hears of this experience. I mean, like my umbrella story, it's not even that big of a deal. It would never have occurred to me to even talk about it ever again, except that it resonated with me with this discussion. Tiny little, you know, blink of an eye kind of moment that I experienced three different times that, you know, seemingly insignificant, but maybe now it could be a part of a story that inspires someone else. I know for me, it was one of those moments where it helped me tie in my struggle with cutting through the fear to move forward and, you know, tie it into something that I could understand because I'm a visual learner. I need to have that picture of the story to expand on what I'm trying to even explain to myself. So I want to encourage you guys to not let the fear of things that you've gone through before hinder you from going, you know, taking a second crack at it and moving forward again. Don't even let the fear of um, watching what has happened to other people keep you. And I know it's hard. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's, again, something that I'm struggling with myself. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys today. But I want you to just be conscious of those moments because if even 50% of the time where you have these um, moments of conflict within yourself, if even if half of the time you can say, no, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to make something amazing happen out of this. I'm not going to let the fear of getting burned stop me from moving forward. Like, imagine the possibilities of what could come out of that, even if it was 50% of the time that this happened with this conversation. So that is my topic for tonight. Um, oh, yes, Janet. Very, see, that's some encouragement. Thank you, Miss Janet. So, yes, telling stories, very helpful, whether I'm talking to you guys or talking back to myself. <laughs> so, again, guys, um, I just want to give you guys the encouragement to give yourself that permission to learn to forgive yourself, to not let your failures decide and determine your, your future successes. Don't feel like because you failed at something before, that you'll necessarily fail at it again. And even if you do, there's going to be a, a time in the future where you do pass, where you do succeed, where you do achieve, where you do excel, but that won't happen unless you keep going through these moments now. And I know it sounds daunting because even as I'm saying the words to you, I'm thinking about what I need to do. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but um, if, it can, if you can draw encouragement from that again, even if 50% of the time you make that choice to not let that fear of failing again stop you or let the, the, the pain that comes with that initial failure keep you from trying something that you, you love or ex are excited about or um, motivated to do stop you. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've met people who were really passionate about something, who really had something that they could have contributed, but they didn't because they were afraid of failure or because they tried it and it didn't really work out the first time and then they gave up. Um, and I can tell you myself, there are some things <laughs> that I, I, I'm, I'm still working at it, which is why I'm comfortable having this discussion with you. I haven't given up yet. I haven't given up. I shouldn't even say yet. I haven't given up. I'm still working on things, but, um, you know, I, I get it. I understand. I feel your pain. I'm probably going to go eat a bag of potato chips right after this talk, but just, you know, be encouraged guys. Um, we're all in this together and that's why I love when we have these discussions because we do get a chance to be in community and share the things that we're going through and even acknowledge that you're not alone, that other people are going through this too, um, that other people have been there and that there is that pot of gold on the other side. You can cross the street, get through the wind and keep your umbrella intact. Okay. So thank you guys all for joining me and chatting with me. I know I said this was going to be a long, a short call. I saved myself 15 minutes. I'm getting better. <laughs> But thank you guys all for chatting with me. Have a great evening. And we will be back here same time, same place next month, actually, because, oh my gosh, this month is over and it's summer. Yay. But um, have a great night, guys. And I will be talking to you again next week. Be sure to have your wins for the week ready. Share, acknowledge, and um, be mindful of those wins. 
because those will also help you get through those days where you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm failing at everything. So again, have a great week, guys. Bye.